My name is Sean D. Tucker, and I fly the 1010-220 Challenger. And this airplane right here is a mean, lean skydancing machine. As you can see, it's a biplane. And I believe with a biplane, you can touch the sky a little bit better. And my airplane, when we have good weather, We'll sometimes dive down at 300 miles an hour, snap rolling it around. We'll pitch it up and fly vertical, tumble a little bit, and then fly backwards tail first for 600 feet. If I get a real good one going, I can do an 800 foot tail slide. What I'm trying to do is fly the best I can and give my heart and soul and passion through this airplane for my love for the sky. Come on in and I'll show you what she's all about. She's fabric. And you can hear that. To me, I think fabric has soul. Just like when you go sailing and you're holding on to the sheet, you can feel the wind. The same, same thing with the biplane. I, I really feel that um, it flies better than these newer, newer styles. This airplane was built just for me. She weighs 1,180 pounds. We have 380 horsepower. And uh, she goes. It's a Lycoming motor. We got dragster pistons in there, so it's higher compression. The airplane's been flowed, balanced, blueprinted. It breathes very well. It's got special exhaust. I got a very high tech composite propeller here. This little baby right here, heart cell, $26,000. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's a great propeller. We overhaul this whole airplane every single year. It's going to tumble this aircraft all the way across that beautiful blue Massachusetts sky. This is called the centrifuge. And now from the upright to the inverted, this is known as the Tucker Upper. He's going to crank it around the corner, drive hard to Air Show Center to show you another of his many original maneuvers. This is called the Double hammerhead. He's gonna bring it in very low to the ground. Pitch that nose up. Watch for the quarter roll. Then the shoulder roll. Holding it there, 1,100 feet. Airspeed almost zero once he sees zero. Application of full hard left rudder to begin not one, but two consecutive hammerhead turnarounds. And now straight at the ground, a three quarter roll is gonna drive him off to air show left. Skyward one more time and end over end. This is called the flip top. This is called a sighting device. And the better I can put my airplane on the vertical line, the better I can fly backwards tail first. So I put what's on the vertical now on the horizontal. And that's how I see where I am when I'm going straight up. And when I'm absolutely vertical, you know, the airplane's gonna start slowing down. And all of a sudden, this is gonna tell me I'm going backwards. And if I keep this bar on the horizon out there and I look out there, sometimes I can go backwards as far as 800 feet. And that is a lot of fun. That makes it a wild ride. He is gonna back this aircraft up, looking for negative air speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour, letting that nose fall down through the horizon a set of snap rolls as he drives off to air show right. There's not much to the airplane. We want to keep it very simple. The simpler it is, uh, the less you have an opportunity for things to wreck. We got our basic gauges, our FPM gauges, our, our manifold pressure gauges, G meter. Let's check on this G meter. The highest I've hit on this airplane so far this year is 7.7 .7 negative and 11.1 .1 positive which is tough on the body. This thing is not easy to do, and it's also tough on the airplane. The outside eight-sided loop. As you can imagine, this style of flying is very hard on the body, very athletic. So now, as he rolls to upright and then end over end, Sean's gonna take a very short break, climb to catch some altitude, catch his breath, and let the engine temperatures cool down slightly. You can tell my fuel gauge is just a little bitty piece of plastic that we use that we've put, you know, there's four gallons, six gallons, eight gallons, 10 gallons to know where we are. I, I fill it up with 12 gallons during the performance and I land with three gallons and it's better to see it than to believe it here from an electronic gauge and we have both there. And now Sean is gonna show you a maneuver that was used in 1972 to win the United States, the World Aerobatic Championship Trophy. This is called the torque roll and no one in the world today does it better than Sean D. Tucker. 
Once at zero airspeed, that 380 horsepower engine takes over, continuing to roll the aircraft to the left. And Sean is in control at all times as he starts to back it up straight at the ground. Again, in excess of 90 miles an hour, and only when he decides it's time does he let that nose fall down through the horizon as he drives off to air show left. Pulling up instantly. This is called the alley-oop. It's the world's smallest inside loop. Watch for the nose to come up. Essentially a backflip in the 10-10-220 Challenger. A half of a roll with a push off the bottom is our indication that Sean is ready to attempt the triple ribbon cut. Let's see if he can do it. 210 miles an hour going through ribbon number one to left knife edge flight for number two to the inverted to shred that third and final ribbon. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not see that performed anywhere else in the world unless you're watching Sean D. Tucker and the 10-10-220 Challenger. It's a very dangerous business. This is not something that you learn overnight. It's something that takes hours and hours of practice. I try to practice three times a day in the airplane. And the more I practice, the better I get. The more I practice, the more the wings feel like they're my arms. By doing that and being totally dedicated to it, you can do this safely. And by doing it safely, you're able to create magic in the sky. You know, truly, I think air show flying is performance art. It's something that um, you want to invoke an emotion in, in somebody. I want to thrill them. I want them to say, golly, that guy's crazy. But I know in my heart that you only can be crazy once. You can't be crazy every day. So it has to be very planned and very choreographed. I want these folks to see a person doing extraordinary things, but I also want them to see me as an ordinary guy who has an incredible amount of passion for the sky. And you got to combine those two together so you can do it day in and day out. And that, that's the key to flying this airplane. Our sequences are only 12 minutes long, but I got 12 minutes for that audience to look up to the sky and say, that's what I thought an airshow pilot would be doing.